this video, I will answer all the most important questions about protein and your kidneys. What happens to your kidneys if you stop eating protein completely? And also, what are the healthiest protein sources for the kidneys? And where to find keto analogs in 2024? Catherine here, I'm a doctor of natural medicine and I've been helping CKD patients take control of their health for more than a decade now. And the reason why I'm making this video is because many of you guys are having huge success in improving your protein or your numbers, your creatinine and your kidney function by switching to a low protein plant-based diet. This approach works, period. Cutting back on meat, fish and dairy protects your kidneys that's not even up for debate but as always there are challenges i know many of you are wondering where on earth do you get protein without reaching for a ribeye because let's be real you need protein it's essential just like coffee in the morning or all the bad jokes i put in my videos you can't live without it so let's answer the big question, what are the healthiest protein sources you can eat? It's clear we can't avoid protein entirely, it's an essential nutrient. So where do we get the protein we need for kidney health? Spoiler alert, protein is everywhere. First off, let's get one thing straight. Almost every single food item has protein except fruit. You think you're avoiding it? <laughs> nope, you eat a slice of bread, bam, protein. This is not a joke, by the way. Actually, that small slice of bread contains 2.7 grams of protein. And maybe you add a side of broccoli, more protein. That small side dish of broccoli is another 4.2 grams of protein. So you ate a small meal you thought was just carbs and instead you just got 7 grams of protein. But is that a big deal, you ask? Well, the average CKD patient only needs about 30 to 50 grams of protein per day. But with just bread and broccoli, you've already hit 7 grams and you haven't even looked at anything that once swam or moved. So to answer your question, what are the healthiest protein sources? The answer is all those plant-based foods that also contain other essential nutrients, vitamin, fiber, and all that healthy stuff, and as little protein as possible. Because as we have seen, it's very hard to eat too little protein as long as you eat anything at all. Everyone always eat too much protein, never too little. And what about specific foods, you ask? Now, if you want to know about some specific high-protein foods, well, Keep in mind that not all protein is created equal. For example, the protein you get from most grains, nuts, and veggies is not a complete protein. It misses some essential amino acid. Now, that doesn't mean your body can't use it. Think of it as building IKEA furniture. You just need all the pieces. Throw in a few seeds, some nuts, and you've got yourself a complete protein with no instructions needed. So basically, if your diet is well planned, you won't have issues. And of course, if you'd eat meat, for example, or fish or dairy, well, that will be a complete protein. But those foods also come with unhealthy amounts of phosphorus, which is the number one enemy of your kidneys. Well, Number two, maybe after protein. And yes, there are certain protein sources that are low in phosphorus and still contain complete high quality protein. Egg whites are an example, no phosphorus in them, just high quality protein. I especially recommend them to patients that are on dialysis. But as little phosphorus as possible and egg whites are your best friends. And another group of foods that contains high quality protein but without phosphorus are soy based foods. You know, edamame, tofu, tempeh, these are very rich in protein. For example, tofu has about 10 to 15 grams of protein per half cup. So again, amazing for dialysis patients. And they could also be present in the diet of CKD patients not on dialysis if the amount is small enough. Soy also helps reduce proteinuria. So not only soy foods are they rich in protein, but they're actively trying to help 
your kidneys chill out. Seriously, can't steak do that? Don't think so. Something else worth mentioning are whole grains. Now, you can plan a renal diet that works without soy foods, but you cannot plan any serious long-term diet without whole grains, which is important because some whole grains are sources of complete protein as well. Buckwheat, quinoa, and amaranth are perfect examples. These whole grains are full of vitamins, fiber, magnesium, iron, and many more essential nutrients, making them ideal for your diet. Diet. Another food worth mentioning is chia seed. These seeds are not just rich in complete protein, they also contain omega 3s, another nutrient that's hard to get in a plant based diet. Worth mentioning is spirulina as well. Now, spirulina is super rich in protein, so be careful with it. It contains around 4 grams of complete protein per tablespoon, and it's also super rich in iron and in a bunch of essential vitamins. And that's why spirulina is often considered a super food. So in summary, all these amazing protein sources are here to make sure you don't need a steak. Save your kidneys the extra work and they'll thank you later. Okay, next question. What would happen to your kidneys if you stop eating high protein foods completely? Okay, let's say tomorrow you completely give up steak, hamburgers, bacon, cheese, fish, and all that stuff for good. What happens to your kidneys? Well, in my experience, when I start a patient on a low-protein diet, I will know if they are following it. And why you ask? Because their GFR improves or at least it stabilizes. This happens in the vast majority of cases. And as long as the patient doesn't have an underlying issues that's still causing damage. But how does that work, you ask? Well, to explain what happens inside your kidneys when you stop eating all that protein, try thinking about your kidneys as if they were a muscle in your leg, all right? And I know that kidneys are not muscles, but bear with me. So let's say you are in your 20s and you are active and perfectly healthy. Would you try to run a 5K marathon tomorrow morning? Well, you probably could, right? And maybe you wouldn't win it unless you train for that marathon, but it probably wouldn't send you to the hospital. Now, let's say you are in your 40s or in your 50s and that you have an injured leg, all right? A tendon or a muscle injury and you can't walk without feeling some pain. Will you still run that 5K marathon tomorrow morning? No, you will give your body some rest. Do you see where I'm getting at? That tendon inside your leg is your kidney and that 5K marathon is that big steak you are really craving. Yeah, there is no way your kidneys will ever be able to recover if you force them to run three or maybe more 5K marathons every week. It's impossible. You need to give them some rest. And that's how a low protein diet works. Okay, next question. This is one I always get. Can you still have a little bit of meat, let's say once or twice a week? Okay, let's say you are already giving your kidneys a chance to recover. You are following a plant-based diet with plenty of healthy foods and you are limiting sodium because that's bad as well. You are also limiting ultra processed foods and you are drinking the right amount of water every day. Will it be really that bad if you also added some meat or some fish every once in a while? Well, guys, let's go back to the heart tendon metaphor. When are your kidneys going to be recovered enough to be able to run another 5K marathon? Unfortunately, there is a difference between your muscles and your kidneys. You cannot put your kidneys to bed rest. They are always working. They are filtering every day and every night. They are dealing with your blood pressure every single moment. They're like those poor souls who pick up every overtime shift just to get by. I mean, they're not exactly thrilled about it, but they're still there grinding. This is why I really don't recommend to add extra stress if you don't have to. So yeah, give your kidneys some love now and they will be able to sustain you for many more years. Now question, what about patients with diabetes? Should they limit protein as well? Now, 
this is an important question if someone has diabetes aren't proteins still healthy for them yes of course lean meats fatty fish and eggs are super healthy for people with diabetes i mean unless they have well kidney disease oh wait are you saying that the kidneys of people with diabetes are just like the kidneys of anyone else well not really they are usually in a worse shape in fact usually diabetic ckd patients have a higher chance of suffering from proteinuria than non-diabetic ckd patients and i won't go too much in depth about this but keep in mind that it has to do with the way high blood glucose levels damage the glomeruli in any case diabetes patients are usually told to limit carbs and increase protein intake and that's good advice if they do not have kidney disease but as soon as their gfr drops below normal levels protein should be limited as well now some good news as long as you limit sugar and ultra processed carbs a low protein diet is perfectly safe for diabetes patients no that apple and kale smoothie won't spike your glucose just make sure you are avoiding the steak, says science. And this brings us to the next question I always get. Why do some doctors still recommend eating cheese and meat? So this is another question I received more than one time. So I recommend patients to start a renal diet. They go to their doctor to get one or more likely to get referred to a renal dietitian to get a diet. But instead of doing that, their doctors tell them to you know keep eating meat and especially cheese i don't know why but some doctors really love their cheese i mean they tell you to avoid sodium but then push cheese that's like telling someone to avoid debt but giving them a credit card with no limit does that make sense to you anyway why does that happen you ask well because your doctor's goal is managing ckd not getting you to improve remember what your doctor says about ckd that you cannot improve yeah so they are basically aiming at keeping your levels stable so your love values are more predictable yeah they're not aiming for wow i feel like a new person but more like hey i'm still here just slightly declining at a steady pace predictable love values are their bread and butter now predictable love values are always a good thing don't get me wrong and if you drastically change your diet your values are going to change and some unexpected stuff may happen so keep eating ribeye with a side of craft singles and well start thinking about which dialysis clinic you prefer because that's the standard predictable prognosis for someone with ckd but hey at least you saved the headache to your doctor up next here's a question i received in the comments why do kidney patients have low albumin so i got this question probably from a carnivore or something like that and the question reads something like you can't live without protein and the proof is that kidney patients always have low albumin now this was probably a big gotcha moment for this user i mean we get albumin from meat kidney patients don't eat meat and they have low albumin gotcha renal dietitian but unfortunately this user totally missed the point here first of all because not all ckd patients have low albumin and it's true that for some patients having low albumin in blood may be a sign of malnutrition of having too little protein in the diet but do you know what is the most common cause of low albumin in blood in ckd patients does anyone know this no it's not skipping the steak is albuminuria also known as proteinuria or as leaking protein in your urine in fact you will find two values for albumin in your lab reports one is serum albumin or albumin in blood and one is urine albumin or proteinuria now albumin is a protein and it must be present in your blood so having too low serum albumin is bad and never in your urine but for patients with high proteinuria values this is easier said than done so do we prescribe a double course of ribeye with a side of bacon to patients with proteinuria no of course not actually removing protein from the diet is the best treatment for proteinuria says science 
and this proves that what this user says is absolutely not the gotcha they thought. Remember, if you want less protein in your urine and more protein in your blood, which is where it should be, you want to follow a renal diet. Now guys, what this study says is, and I quote, low protein diet supplemented with keto analogs seems effective in safely postponing kidney replacement therapy or diasis by reducing proteinuria and the declining kidney function in advanced diabetic kidney disease. So this is a very recent study which was made to confirm what we all already knew for years that the kidneys of people with diabetes are the same as those of the patients without diabetes just with more proteinuria but they also raise an interesting point the use of keto analogs so question what are keto analogs and should you take them keto analogs are a special type of amino acids that patients are supposed to be prescribed when they follow a low protein diet now not everyone is taking them and for most patients it is not a problem in fact most patients eat more protein than they should and this supplement doesn't really help in that case on the other hand those that are following a renal diet that's very strict and very limiting when it comes to protein would really benefit from keto analogs supplementing these special amino acids when on a low protein diet is a way to significantly delay dialysis in advanced stage CKD patients as we can read because they have all we need from protein the essential amino acids but without any of the issues of the protein you get from foods there are a few brands that sell these amino acids including Fresenius and Albutrix and in the past Kidorina as well these are prescription supplements all right but I used to show patients that, yeah, you know, you can also buy Kidorina from the internet as well, as this supplement doesn't require a prescription to be bought. And everyone was happy. Now, unfortunately, that product is not available anymore. So what to do to get some keto analogs in 2024? Well, you are still supposed to get a prescription in order to get keto analogs, all right? So talk to your doctor and get a prescription maybe for a keto sterile from Fristinus, which is the most used keto analog in the world. But you see, it was nice to have options and keto rena used to be the cheapest of the bunch. Now today, the only keto analog you can buy online is Albutrix, as far as I know, which is better than nothing, I guess. By the way, if any of you guys know about other brands that sell keto analogs online, let me know in comment section. But as I was saying, these are a prescription and your doctor should find the perfect brand and the perfect dose for you. And if you want more tips for the renal diet, my video up here is for you. And this is all for today. Thank you for watching. God bless you all. Bye bye.